my phone. We just, so like, it's recording now, and I, I don't edit the podcast at all. Like, oh, okay. I don't I don't edit it at all. So whatever is on here is on here. So uh, we're here with the uh, Small Town Artist Podcast. Uh, we I'm super excited. I love interviewing artists. Um, and we have a, a young artist here, Jose, and your last name is Bautista? Bautista, yes. Bautista, okay. And we met, um, it was last week, wasn't it? Yes, Thursday. Thursday at the uh, Pop of Color Gallery um, um, downtown stroll event mm -hmm. and you had some art and I purchased some art from you yes. right uh which was great because we have it I uh I gave it I gave it to Shelby and there it is look at that you guys can see it on live video so uh purchased this beautiful piece man you're super talented uh I really wanted you to come on the podcast because um I just think that you you would make a very interesting subject um to interview so why don't we just like jump into things um, tell me, like, first of all, tell me how old you are. I like to know that. And tell me, like, you know, where you are right now in terms of your art, your education, and where, where'd you go and all that stuff. Uh, well, I'm 26 years old. Oh, really? Okay. I like to say, tell people I'm, like, 18 or 19. They, <laughs> they still buy it. Uh, and art terms, actually, it's a funny coincidence because my, the downtown stroll was the first time that I've actually gone out somewhere to showcase my own stuff wow yes uh, i recently lost my current job like not that long ago and i decided like hey why not i had this free time so why not just get involved in the art community wow that's great man yeah this was a perfect opportunity and i mean now i'm here so like perfect timing. look at that man yeah yeah wow i didn't know that was your first time showing then oh. uh, now you're on a podcast oh, look yeah, how no. fast things turn around <laughs> next week you'll be showing in new york city in some big event look at that well let's hope so <laughs> let's all hope right so. so uh you went to asu yes okay so tell me what you did at asu at asu i uh, got my bachelor's in uh, studio art concentration painting and drawing uh though i don't really paint much my I like to draw it's more precise for me it's more easy to control mm -hmm. and the funny thing too is that I like control but at the same time I love watercolor as well which is so uncontrolled like that's color. like the opposite it's the complete opposite but then again you have to have extreme control yes. over watercolor yes you really have to have a lot of control so I can understand that mm -hmm. that thought process so then you you were uh, you, you, when did you graduate from Angelo State I graduated in 2018 I have recently gone back to uh, see if I can get my master's in uh, literature, concentration with, in uh, British literature. Really? Yes. Wow, look at that. That's, that's wonderful, man. Yes, um, and so what, what made you want to choose art first, going into getting your BFA? What made you want to do that? Well, I did not, I wasn't really considering art in the beginning. Okay. It sort of happened as like a little minor incident because I went to Western Texas College first in Snyder. And Miss Christina Garza Lubert now she got married. Um, she took an interest in me, and it was it was unexpected because in high school, like yes, I would take art classes and all that, but I didn't really have a teacher taking a specific interest just in me, and my style and what I liked and everything. So she started like interviewing me, as she would call it, every now and then in class, and she found out that I'm a huge Da Vinci fan, and I love Dan Brown and just a bunch of random stuff that I like to think is cool and she showed me um, a thing Da Vinci used to do which was silver point drawings and ever since she started showing me that she I started taking that up and basically my main thing now are silver point drawings and she also pushed me to make my biggest piece ever like my first biggest one which was I think uh, two meters long and a meter and a half tall and wow. so like now every single time I do something in silver it's usually big it's not small I like I like to work on big projects. Okay, so uh, so then you decided from there you were inspired. You say I want to do I want to get a BFA in art. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you enrolled in Angelo State and um, did that. Were you already pra you were already practicing some art before you enrolled? Yes. Were you, were you already sketching and drawing and looking up stuff before you enrolled at Angelo State? Uh, yes, and uh, even before I went to uh, to WTC, I was already drawing. It was funny because I took an art class in high school, and as you know, there's always that one person that like goes around in high yeah. schools like trying to be the bully and everything, mm. and that person tried to bully me, and so I was like, you know what, like just to prove you wrong, I'm gonna practice, I'm gonna get better, and by the end of the year, I was way better than that person, 
And then for me, like, I was like, okay, that was my goal. That was it. And then like, I let it go for a little while. And then I went to WTC and that's when I was like, you know what, I like this. I like this for reals and I'm gonna use it. I'm like, this is what I like. And I take my inspiration a lot too from literature as well. Yeah, t- tell me about that. You have a book here by T.S. Eliot. Yes. It's his poem, Collected Poems from 1909 to 1962. Tell me why you, you, you love T.S. Eliot. What is it about T.S. Eliot's writing that you love? T.S. Eliot had this philosophy of like, you can't really move forward unless you look at the back. Hmm. Because like, think about where we are right now. Think about all the artists that are here alive, like on this time period now. How many of them do you think can tell you about artists from way back then, from still like even pre-Christian times? Like how many of them can explain to you their aesthetics, their way of doing things, everything like that? Like you really can't. They, they, they might be able to, they might not be able to. Right. And T.S. Eliot's whole aesthetic was like, how can we move forward if we don't know where we come from? Right. And me, I was like, that is amazing. That is an amazing way of thinking. And that's, the, that's what I try to apply in art. Like, I really can't work on this silver point drawings or all these things that I do unless I have a fair understanding of what previous artists have done and what their aesthetic was. Mm-hmm. And, you know, literature is all about, like, ideas and everything. So I like to concentrate more on the idea that an artist has instead of their actual works. Their actual works are interesting, but the idea behind all of it is just fascinating because... For example, in a Da Vinci painting, we see the painting, we see the color, we see everything that he put in there. Yet, we don't know why he decided to use that specific color, why he decided to place it in that specific spot. That is what I like to concentrate on. I like the history of it, and the end result is it's just amazing once you understand the history of it. And, and you have some really amazing portraits. I went through your portfolio mm-hmm. at the show, and like you had some amazing art in there. Mm-hmm. That was they were drawings. They were pencil drawings, were yes. they not? Beautifully executed. Really, really great line work. Uh, I I was just like really impressed by like your work. Um, and so you ended up uh, showing there because you know Ashley, right? Ashley went to school with you, is that Yes, right? we graduated together. Yeah. Shout out to Ashley Perales. She's the owner of the uh, Pop of Color uh, Gallery, and, and also she's a wonderful artist in her own right. So, um, And so did she, like, was she, did she like hit you up, or did she see your work somewhere? Because how, how did that happen? Uh, actually, like, uh, like I said, after I lost my job, I decided to get involved in it, and I messaged her. I asked her, I was like, can you give me any pointers? Because I know that you're doing really good in your community. Mm -hmm. And I just basically want to get started. I just want to showcase my art. And then she's like, well, I have an opening. And I was like, well, that's great. Perfect timing for both of us. Like, and that's how it all started. That's great, man. And so... um... What were your what were, what were you thinking like what was your thought process whenever you were like okay it's time for me to like show my work what I guess what did you have to go off of did the instruct did the professors at ASU say this is how you approach galleries or how did you know like what to what to do like what did you even know? how did you know to pick up the phone and call Ashley I'm like like how did you know what to do I I really didn't I really didn't. I just... uh, It was like a shot in the dark almost. Yeah, I just left it up to chance. Okay. Did you have any reservations about like, I don't know if I want to show my work? Or did you feel nervous about it at all? Or were you already past that? Oh, I was freaking out. (laughs) (laughs) I was freaking out. (laughs) Why were you freaking out? Because like, uh, like this this was my first time like doing something individually, like on my own. Usually like it's like class stuff, like showing showing with like other students and everything. This was the first time I was given an opportunity to like, hey, just be on your own, like have your own things and just do your own thing and me I was like that that is a scary thought because because I've never done it before uh-huh. and like like I just threw this shot in the dark and then so I grabbed something and I didn't know what to do with it I was like I'm freaking out so like and I remember one of the things that Miss Lubert used to tell me she was like always like try and showcase the things that you like yeah the interests that you have and so yes. I just went with that it worked yeah. <laughs> it worked because I bought <laughs> yeah I bought one of your pieces yeah and I am so glad it worked <laughs> And, uh, and so, you know, um, I think a lot of artists have that, that first step is, is very scary. Have you, had you sold before? Had you sold any artwork before then? I sold it, but I have, in Snyder, I became very good friends with like restaurant owners and stuff. And, okay. And so every now and then one of them would buy something from me, but never to like, never. So you showed in those restaurants? No. 
And you were just friends with them, and they knew I, you. You, yes. you did. You did art. Yes, okay. I. I was hired to do a mural for one of them once. Um, I say I, in Snyder, I did two murals actually. Yeah. Oh, you did so outside or inside? Outside. Really? Yes. Of what? What were those murals of? Uh, one of them for, was for a restaurant called Norma's Cafe, mm -hmm. and the lady wanted a sunset outside, mm -hmm. like a sunset and a mariachi, a charro guy. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and it was it was just impressive because we had like the curtains uh, opening up, a whole bunch of different colors, and the name in the center. So like we tried to make it as neat as possible because it was me and two other people working on it. Oh, okay. So you did it with somebody else. Yeah, it was kind of like a big project. So. Okay. That, yeah. that, I mean, that's a great first, uh, mm -hmm. I think, interaction with like the, you know, making money from your artwork, doing a mural is like great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great first step to do that. But it's totally different, right, than you taking your work, taking it somewhere and then having people pass by and look at it, right? Isn't oh, that... yes. It's completely different because with a mural, like, you know what the person wants. You know right. what it is that they're asking for. And you know they're going to like it once you're done with it because it's specifically what they ask for. But whenever you showcase your own stuff, like, you're freaking out because you're like, are they going to like it? Like, this is just stuff I do for myself or I do for fun, things I like. Like, are they going to like it? Is it going to be the same approach or something? It's, it's always scary for me. Do you have that same mentality with, showing work online no so tell me about that what is like are you are you showing our work online or oh. if you are where yeah i usually i use a, a website called artshows.com okay. and i'm very i'm <laughs> i'm a very uh i'm gonna put it like a greedy person in a sense a what so a greedy person a greedy okay yes. wait. so i like to showcase like i like to enter exhibits that are like big that are like too much for me in a sense mm -hmm. and simply because like if I don't aim big I'm never going to make it big sure and so I try to enter stuff like that and usually for that what I do is just I pick something that is very deeply meaningful to me something that I worked on for months mm -hmm. because those sketches that you saw the portraits I worked on those for weeks mm. and do you remember the the big one that I had on there um, I had a big one framed and that one I actually it took me weeks maybe months to prepare with the images and the ideas that i had for that wow. and to finish the piece itself it took me like almost half a year wow so uh whenever i make art pieces for myself that are deeply meaningful to me mm -hmm. those i spend a lot of time on yeah i'm working on another big one that's also like two three meters long by two meters tall in pencil and, or uh it's actually uh silver silver okay you did yes. say that mm -hmm. and uh that one i've been working on for like a year and a half wow Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, it seems like you stay pretty busy mm -hmm. with art. I try to. Uh, and you, so you look for opportunities to show online, like, meaning like an online show? Like, mm -hmm. okay. But what about, like, other avenues of showing online, like, you know, social media? Like, what do you think about what those avenues? I really don't show on social media that much. Like, on Instagram, like, if you already noticed, I really haven't had anything up on Instagram, mm -hmm. like, at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook, I do like to show on there, but it's mainly because I have family and close sure. friends in it. So every now and then I like to show what it is that I've done. Mm -hmm. But other than that, not, I haven't really done much. Is there a reason why? It, uh, there's really no reason why. I just haven't really thought of it much. Okay. I mean, that, I think, mm -hmm. you know, every artist is either at the point where they're showing a lot online mm -hmm. or they're trying to figure out how to show online or they haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. And like there's some artist is in that particular one of those stages. Um, I think just considering your level of skill with your artwork and the uniqueness of it, because this caught my eye, mm -hmm. this this piece from Game of Thrones. Um, I, don't, I haven't never even watched the show, <laughs> but Shelby has. Yeah. So like I know she would love it. And you did such an awesome job on this piece. I was like, I got it. I just know I got to have it. Mm -hmm. I got to have it. So, but I think that because you, you, you're, you have such a passion for your interests that there are so many people that have the same type of passion mm -hmm. that if they saw it on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, <laughs> any one of those places, I guarantee you'd pick up at least a few fans mm -hmm. at, at the beginning. And then it would probably snowball to, to many, many fans. Um, so, you know, I, I would like to encourage you just as already a fan of yours that you look at putting your artwork out there and, and I know it's a lot to figure out, but I mean, you learn as you go, like you said, you know, if you don't aim for big things, right, mm -hmm. then you'll, 
you won't ever get big. So yeah. I think that you should definitely do it. You should definitely jump on social media and, and, and go, go hard on there, man. Because, you know, if you're just sitting down and you're just drawing something, just put up a camera, get up a little tripod like this over here mm -hmm. and just point it and just hit the time lapse button on the iPhone and let it go. And then you just start, you know, you just start creating. Cause I would love to have seen how you did this. Um, it's wood burning art, isn't it? Yes. I would love to have seen how you did this because this is so intricate. Uh, did you sketch this first? Yes. And then you and then you did the, the wood burning. Is that how it usually goes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because your drawing skills are are on point. They're they're very good. So tell me what what do you what's your next move? I mean, you you sold. Uh, did you sell anything else besides this one at Ashley's? Uh, yes, I sold some small things. Good. Uh, like the little bit, the smaller ones that I had on there. Okay. Yeah, mainly Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you almost got me on the Dragon Ball. <laughs> I almost got it, but I was like, I'm gonna get this one for Shelby. Yeah. Um, so like, what's your now? What's your plan? Like, what are you? Are you looking at anything else to to showcase? Are you looking at any other places, or, you know, what's your what are you thinking? I time? haven't really looked at any other places yet. I've been a little busy doing other things, like you know, college kid. I uh, have homework finals coming up. Okay. So that's been keeping me busy, but definitely once I free up a little, that's exactly what I'm going to be looking at. So you're still going to school? Yes. Did you, did you enroll, enroll already for your master's? Is that where you're at? Or you uh, I'm taking up? what they call leveling classes to okay. be able to skip the bachelor's in literature and be able to ah. jump into the master's. Got it. And so hopefully I will be starting that soon because my whole entire goal is to teach. Oh, really? Yes. So you, uh, to teach art or teach? Either one. Literature or art? Literature or art. I'm going to apply for the master's program on both. Whichever one I hit, I make it to first, that's what I'm going for. Um, how long have you been in San Angelo? Uh, four, almost five years. Four. What, what is your like impression? Because you came from Snyder, is that right? Yes. Is that where you're from, Snyder? Yes. How big of a town is that? It's like half the size of San Angelo. About 50,000 people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, was you, what was your impressions when you got here and what's your impression now of San Angelo in terms of the art community when you first got here? It's actually, I can see that it's been growing a little. Okay. In what ways have you uh, seen? Like I have the art stroll. Like okay. there, I've seen that there's more people like getting involved in it. Like some of my friends that I actually graduated with, uh, they're getting more involved with it. Yeah. And I can just see it growing a little more. And I'm just hoping it keeps on growing so more people get involved in it. Did you, did you think, did you have like any perceptions of like, oh, I can't, I, I, I'm, was Snyder challenging for you to sell art or did you not think that you were there yet or what was your perception of Snyder before you came here? Uh, well, my perception of Snyder, how can I put it, like it wasn't bad at all and the only reason why I didn't, haven't really decided to like sell much of my art stuff is simply because like I am not at a level that I want to be yet. Well, like what, what, what level would you like, like to be Like level at? of skill, like... Okay. I want to be so much better than what I am already. Before you... Before I even start doing anything serious with it. Serious as in... As in like entering more art shows, getting involved in more of the art strolls and everything. Because uh -huh. I really want to like see if I can take part in the uh, Lubbock one. Okay. The first Friday one. Okay. But at the same time, like I feel like I am not skilled enough to do something like that. What... what do you have like a um, uh, an example of like a... A type of level you want to be at and that's what you're aiming for my my, my levels are very high are you are they really is yeah. there one in particular is there, there's an artist you follow that you're like i want to be like this this high or is there an artist you're a fan of you know the, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the classics of the class like renaissance art yeah renaissance art da vinci okay. michelangelo da Raphael, Michel okay. Donatello, all those uh can i be honest with you yes you're already at a point where you you could show mm -hmm. and you could already start you could already, be, you already are, obviously, you already are selling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you, you I, in my opinion, I don't think you should wait mm -hmm. to get to that point because you'll bring everybody with you in terms of fan, fans of your work. They'll bring, you'll bring them with you as you start to improve your skill sets and you'll amass an even bigger collector base or fan base as you bring them along with you as you're building that skill set. I think that if you wait till you're there, they're gonna miss out on all the juicy story and like watching you develop as an artist and 
they'll miss out on that. I don't think you should deny them that. I think you've, you've got a great skill set already. And as you're trying to figure out how you want to get to that higher skill set, I think you should bring them along with you. Mm -hmm. So I think if you want to show more, I think you should definitely show more and enter those shows and all that. I think you should. You're already there, man. Yeah. I don't think you need to wait. Yeah. You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you waited. You're not a, you're not a allergic cats, are you? Oh, no, I love cats. Okay, good. I was like, this would be a terrible time <laughs> to find out that you're allergic to cats mm -hmm. as he's jumping on you. Um so that's my opinion. I think that, you know, I, I think that a lot of artists are trying to like wait. They're like, I'm not there yet. I'm not quite at that point um, where I could enter the big shows. I think you should just go ahead and enter them mm -hmm. and, and see what happens. And if you don't get in, that's okay. No big deal. I mean, yeah. enter another show and you might get in there or go talk to a you know a restaurant you like and say, hey, would you like to show some of my work or go to a coffee shop that you think is in line with some of your interests and and ask if you could show there because I guarantee you this right here this piece right here and all the other wood burns and, and the portraits you've done they, this would get in mm -hmm. and, and to a lot of those places very easily so I would I would highly recommend you do that okay. um, what uh, when you were at ASU did they did you go through any type of like art business classes was there anything they taught you in terms of like okay when you get out of when you when you graduate and you got your diploma this is what you do in order to start selling your artwork this is how you list your stuff online this is you know how you approach a gallery did you get any of that before you left uh a little bit especially with my portfolio prep class okay uh, professor hall he okay. was randy hall yeah yes he he was uh usually telling us every now and then like how to set up an art gallery and all that stuff how to present it and all what type of like was it like did you go into an art gallery and set it up or did you like was it mostly like just like you know instruction it was mostly instruction okay so have you ever set up a gallery before I, show? at the college i did with some of my uh, student peers was it at the coop uh, no, it was just the one there at the university. The the all the inside gallery yes. they have in the in that in the that hallway towards the back area. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, but did you get any like? Other than that, no. Other than that, no, 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 nothing on like how to sell print work or where to get prints done or. No. Did you have prints over there at your at the show or were they all originals? Uh, they were all originals. Wow, you could sell so many prints too. <laughs> you could <laughs> yeah. sell so many prints. Um, you know, I think that uh, the level that you're at, um, I think it's probably time for you to start looking at prints. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I'll be more happy to share with you my print, uh, the printers I use. I don't print anything at home. Mm -hmm. um, I use external printers, like, you know, businesses that would do the prints. I'd be happy to share that list with you and, and share it with the listeners as well. There's, I use several different um, print shops to get those done. Uh, and there's a lot out there. I mean, mm -hmm. there's there's so many different types out there. But um, I think the most important thing is figuring out how to capture the image yeah. so you can print it. Um, the library, if you haven't been to the Tom Green Library, downstairs they've got the STEM, uh, I guess, project downstairs where they, you can rent equipment. Mm -hmm. And you can actually go there, rent high-quality high camera equipment take pictures of your artwork and they also have a high quality printer where you can print your artwork off and slice it up so you can turn it into prints and start selling those online or at shows or wherever you decide to go so that would be a great place i think for you to start oh. is going over there okay. so um so now that you're 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 about to Oh, sorry. Even in game of thrones ringtone. <laughs> i knew it i knew it i knew that was game yeah. of thrones um, now that you're finishing up, uh, these next classes, you're going to get into your MFA. How important is art to you as you start to transition into like, now you're doing more literature based studies. Like how does that mix in with the literature? Actually, believe it or not, I feel like literature and art or just brother and sister, like twins, literally, because a lot of the things that I learned in my art history classes, I also relearn in literature classes. Tell me about that. What do you mean? Like... When it comes to like impressionism, okay, uh, there's a lot of works in literature, especially British literature, when they concentrate on like, on like the snapshot of an image, and all of the poetry that that comes with it, especially like modern literature, modern British, and all of that concentrates around like the fact of like solipsism that you get with expressionism. 
you, they concentrate with the colors and the emotions that you get with impressionism and then they concentrate like on the poetry like the darkness of the world like world war one that basically is represented with uh realism so all of it's like two different sides of the same thing one with words one with images and i love that it's it, i was amazed by like the resemblance of, of the two and i'm the kind of person that believes that art literature math science history they can all be simply combined into just one thing that is art are you so you know i i see that you have a lot of influence mm -hmm. from literature um in uh, some of your artwork mm -hmm. is there are you like planning on writing a piece that's then in that's then you create an, a piece of artwork that's inspired by your 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 writings and then vice versa like you'll create an art piece that that's that's inspired by the art is that how you're thinking? i actually already have okay it tell was, me about that it was for um for my final project in painting three class and the teacher had us like do a series of paintings and me being an overachiever like always i did like six instead of the required four they were black paintings i got the idea from ad reinhardt where he did the black paintings combining like a lot of black with just a little bit of color okay and mixing it with turpentine and painting with that and i also got like an idea from Piet mondrian which was like basic uh like uh, what's it called whenever you bring everything down to its basic lines that's what i did i also got inspiration from a poem by robert frost called fire and ice and i made a i made an art piece called uh, ice and fire and i wrote a poem that goes along with it and all of my other art pieces are relating to that fact the fact of like fire and ice like have you ever read that poem robert frost no i haven't it basically it's talking about like the two ways that the world is going to end is it, if it's either going to end through fire or if it's going to end through ice and he basically goes with like uh, it's going to end with fire and me i'm saying well if it ends with ice both things are good mm -hmm. and that's whenever I started remembering like another poem by T.S. Eliot who is my main inspiration in all of this and he he said in his opening line he said winter keeps us warm and to me that was always an intriguing idea because I was like how can winter keep so keep us warm and then when I took my modern British literature class the teacher started explaining the meaning of that poem and then he hit me Winter keeps us warm because it's in the toughest times, in the cold times, that we all come together. And in the cold times, when snow falls on everything, everything looks the same. So everything, in a sense, could be united under all of that snow that we don't see, simply to survive the winter. Mm. And little by little, I kept on thinking, like, how can I apply all of this to everything like that I'm doing right now? And so I came up with different art pieces. There's there's one, like I said, Ice and Fire. There's another one called uh, Bartlett, or AKA Minute to, Minute to Midnight. And there's another one that I used the, the Fibonacci spiral, the, the spiraling in. And that one's uh, basically about like, um, like something that is already predestined and something that could be random. The spiral represents something that is random and there's circles that are opening up in between that, like the ripple effect. And whenever the spiral connects with the circle, that's because that has already been destined. It doesn't matter which way you go because the spiral goes everywhere. It's always going to touch at that exact same point where you need to be in your life at one point. And the one with Bartlett, it, it was basically explaining like, even though it doesn't look like, like we are almost at the end, we are at the end. And the reason why he says that because he gives an example of a beaker and a bacteria falling in that beaker. And every minute, the bacteria doubles in size. It takes for one full hour to be completely full of bacteria. And the question he asked was, at what minute is that beaker half full? And a lot of people kept on saying, well, at 30 minutes. And like, no, it's a minute 59. A minute 59 is gonna be halfway. The next minute is gonna be completely full. And it's the same thing with us. If, like, like you said, if we wait, we think we have all this time, but right. it's not sure. It's not a given thing. Right. So and that that's that. It, it's a lot of thinking that goes into my sure. pieces. What you know? What is it that you want other people like that are fans or potential buyers or collectors of your work? Mm -hmm. What is it that you want them to understand about the artwork? Is it is it because you, you have such a 
you have a very abstract point of view in terms of how to interpret it, but you also have a very literal way of interpreting it through words and, and writings and all that stuff. Do you want them to kind of like come to their own conclusion about it or would you rather give it to them? Oh, uh, a little bit of both. Okay. I want them first to come up with their own conclusion so that way then I can tell them what I was thinking about it. Okay. Because part of the reason why I want to be a teacher is because I always find it super interesting whenever there's a new student that's always given their opinion about an art movement that has been happening for a long time. Right. And then they may say something that you never thought of. And you're like, you know what? That really does apply to it. Mm. And then when you finally explain it, then they understand like, oh, okay, so this is what's going on. But you in your mind, you're like, okay, the idea that they came up with, it's still good. Right. It could be something new that nobody has ever thought of because every mind is its own little world. So that, that's why I want like, like a little bit of both, like I said. I think that you've got a very interesting way of looking at artwork mm -hmm. and how it ties into literature and, and philosophy. Uh, I think you need to be telling more people about how you create, why you create, the meaning behind it, where it started, where it derived from. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people would be able to connect with that, like in a very real sense. I mean, you mentioned that poem about you know staying warm through the winter, and you know it like it like brings up all these images of you know I don't want to be warm through the summer, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to be cold during the summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why people go to the pool. So you know, there's a lot of images to go through that. But as you explain it, there's this all these other concepts that come into play. But, you know, now I'm starting to think, how many pieces, art pieces, do you have right now in your home? Oh, a lot. Like, I don't really have any room left. <laughs> I can probably imagine. For any of my things. Like, this right here that I brought with me Yeah, today, let's see that. Let see it's that. one that, I'm, that I've been working on. I just let it go for a little while. And if you can tell... Oh, wow. This is done in silver as well. Oh, this is silver? Yes. This, that's beautiful. Yes, and this is actually for a new series that I was thinking about starting. What uh, what kind of is this canvas? What is this? Yes, it's canvas that I prepared with gesso, like two. Oh, you cups primed it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, are you planning on painting it, or is it going to stay just in silver? It's going to stay in silver because I'm using three different kinds of metal: silver, copper, iron, gold. Okay. And uh, as it was explained to me by Miss Lubert again, uh, she said that over time the metal will start oxidating. So eventually they will change color. Oh, wow. Yes, the big piece, the very first one that I made was done with silver. And very, very lightly, I can already tell some changes yeah. onto it. No kidding. Yes. And so that, that's basically the concept I'm using with these. The, see, this is exactly why you need to be posting this up online. <laughs> because that is, that's a really great piece. Yes. And, uh, you know, unless anybody's on the live video right now, mm -hmm. they're going to be listening to the podcast and be like, where can I, where can I see this piece that he's describing that's, that's yes. you know, made out of silver? So, uh, again, another point. I think you just got to go for it. I think mm -hmm. this, whenever you're done with that, how big is that? That's probably like a 24 by 36 or what? Yes. Uh, as he's rolling it up, uh, I, yeah, you've you got to start putting that stuff out there, man. It's 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 so good. Yeah. Um, you definitely need to. Yeah, it's it's from my new series that I want to start about, like the creation of the universe. Oh wow! Because one, on one side is Shiva, on the other one is the God. I can't remember her name right now. Uh, but they, there's a theory that like they both one took over the underworld and one took over the heavens and the sky and all that stuff. And in between them, there was this pillar that arose in between them. Right. And the pillar is what makes the axis of the earth. And that is where everything comes from. And so that's one theory. That's one of, of the, uh, 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 what is their religion? Hinduism. Hinduism, yeah, yeah. Yes, Hinduism, that, like, that's one of their theories. Another mm -hmm. theory is like there was this huge egg that cracked open. And from it, it came like the universe, the stars, the constellations, and all of that. And there's another theory that says like everything rests on the turtle on the back of a turtle i've seen that yes and that there's, that there's just turtles infinitely going down that there's nothing underneath except another turtle and so my way of thinking is like i want to make an art piece that talks about like the moment of creation not just from christianity or any other like religion that we are used to but all the other different ones because to, uh, all the religions they all have their own like moment of creation and i mean which one's right? We don't know which one's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it could be any of them. Yeah. It could be any of them. Um, 
any last uh, ideas or words you want to say on the podcast for the listeners? I really don't have anything right now. No? Um, I, I'm really grateful that you came on and that you agreed to come onto the podcast. Um, I think that you've got incredible talent and an incredible mind that I think it's going to just allow you to execute some really amazing art pieces that I think more people should see. Um, and I invite you to continue to participate in the, the Small Town Artist podcast community and, and show your artwork to the other artists that are on there. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now, now that I've said that. <laughs> what is your Instagram handle uh, so people can... Because um, uh, I'm going to send people over there to, to follow you. And I know you don't have anything there now, <laughs> but that's going to force you to have to put something up. Yes. Uh, what is your Instagram handle? It's uh, Bautista4107. Uh, last name is spelled B-A-U-T-I-S-T-A 4107. Okay. So you guys heard that. You go over there. He's going to post something up. Uh, I'll post this podcast up tomorrow. So you got to have at least a, a one or two uh, you know, pieces or posts up on Instagram for people to see what we've been talking about. Um, just to get the, the, the ball moving. Okay. Right. Uh, I encourage you to do that because you really do have a, a strong, uh, very unique talent. So uh, I really would love to see that and, and see people start to comment on it and become fans and, and want to purchase more of your work. And uh, we've got some events coming up that I'm going to invite you to participate with. We've got an event at the mall called The Art of Shopping. It's going to be March 12th. And they're looking for artists to pair up with boutiques and stores at the mall. And we held one uh in early in november and it went really well ashley was there yes uh so i would love for you to participate um oh, and, excited and bring your artwork to set up and and pair you will pair you with one of the the shops um and um uh, and this should be a should be a fun time man It'd be another way for you to get your artwork out there awesome so how's that sound that sounds awesome that sounds good yes. okay all right well jose thank you so much buddy appreciate you coming by thank you and uh we'll post up this podcast um tomorrow awesome thank you all right thanks guys thanks for joining in, in the podcast uh please subscribe please uh pass it along share it with your friends and please join our facebook uh private group the small town artist podcast um join in the conversation and we'll post up some content um from the interview cool see you later